Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending from where you're watching us from. It is yet another opportunity for us to just interact, to have uh, enriching conversations about growing ourselves, learning from one another, inspiring one another, and just calling uh, one another to, to come out of, of, of that slumber and that, you know, just that settling and just be everything that God has called you to be and just go out there and become. We have always said here that we don't wait for the whole picture to appear. We start, we make the first step, and God walks with us through so that we can continue to 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 impact destinies, to impact life, to impact to we have to live an impact. That has been our trademark, that has been our stamp. And therefore thank you so much for always being a very good company of this show. My name is Helen Wangoe Matho. Welcome to the Deborah Generation Show. And with me as always it's always such a delight. You know, mm. this show can never be what it is <laughs> without this face, without this voice, without this person. She is an incredible, amazing woman of God. Pastor Miriam. Mm. Karibu sana. Thank you. This is all about God. Yes. And it's Him who lives His life in us. Mm -hmm. And He makes us every day to be like Him. Mm -hmm and we give him the glory. Kabisa. And we ask him every time to just make himself known through us. Yes. Yeah, and it's a pleasure to, to be here. Mm -hmm. And as I've always said, this show cannot be complete too without <laughs> our host, Helen. <laughs> there is some, some mysterious, myst mysterious way mm. that she's able to connect mm. and bring forth what is expected. Mm. So we also appreciate and congratulate you on this. Thank you. Thank mm. you. Thank and you so much, Ma. Mm. Mm. So we've been um, looking at uh, a portrait uh, of a lady uh, that uh, was had interesting bits of her life that we can look at. A lady who was a servant, a lady who, who was, we could say, abused in a way. Uh, in order to bring uh, a solution to the master's home or to the master's uh, life. And this lady was Hagar. We looked at how the master's decision uh, brought a lot of conflict and, 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 and uh, strife in her own life between them and, and, and the master. And of course, even her life making her being always on flight mode mm -hmm. and uh, we looked at um, and uh, at how sometimes desperate decisions can cause us uh, get into some spaces which are not very comfortable we also looked at sometimes uh, you as a servant uh, being given the opportunity to shine can can overwhelm you and get into your head and you forget that whoever has caused you to shine and you forget to give back the glory to the master. Mm -hmm. And we looked at uh, the different aspects of the life of Haka. And today uh, we want to start uh, on another portrait. We started with the servant, now we want to go to the master. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or the mistress. To the mistress. Yes, yes. Yeah, you you so, go down up. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So today we want to start on the journey of Sarai, or the one who was called Sarah, the one who they changed the name from Sarai to Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, Mom, mm. who was Sarah? Mm, we today want to look at Sarai, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you have Saul and Paul in the yes. Bible, yes. and uh, many other people like you have Jacob, then you have Israel. Mm. And um, we want to start looking at Sarai, the wife of Abraham, mm. or Abram, mm -hmm. before we can call him Abraham. Mm -hmm. So Sarai was the wife of 
Abraham, mm. you know, the father of faith. Yes. And um, the Bible talks about her in Genesis 11. Mm. They are just at the last, last, last verses of Genesis 11 mm -hmm. is where we get introduced to Sarai. Mm. And we are told she was wife mm. to Abraham. Mm. And then she, then as the Bible closes that chapter 11 of Genesis, mm. tells us very well that she was barren and had no child. Mm. You know, and... Uh, that's a portrait that looks like we saw that uh, uh, Haga was flight or someone who was just who abused, fleeing. fleeing or mm. someone who looked like uh, they were uh, prone to abuse, mm. you know, to misuse. Mm. Now Sarai is a picture of someone who is cast in their society, mostly barren people. And especially women have suffered a lot of, a lot of, uh, what should I call it? Like uh, you are disintegrated mm. or you're set apart. Mm. You are removed from the realities of the society. Mm. People can always be looking at you and talking about you. And it looks like uh, you have nothing, you have no contribution to the mm. society. Mm. It's like, I remember you had something you said last time. Mm. Everybody is looking at you. And even if you did so much, they're still remembering, is it that woman that doesn't have children? Yes. It's like um, children should be the, the name. Mm. Or your, the validation. Yeah, should be the title mm. that you are addressed. Mm. You are the addressed respect with the home. respect. It's like uh, when we call someone doctor, mm. we call them professor. We call them pastor, bishop, reverend. Mm. It's like mama so and so should be like a, a title that gives you room for mm. operation. Mm. And so we see the Bible talking about her being barren and then journeying. This journey to Canaan, first of all, I would want everybody to know, this did not begin in Genesis 12. Mm. It began in Genesis 11 with the father of Abraham who was living the, the, the Ur of Chaldee, mm. and he wanted to go and settle in Canaan. Yes. It looks like God had begun talking to this family, mm. even prayer, talking to Abraham. Yes. But somehow, Terah lingered, or because yes. Terah is that person who is always lingering or mm. loitering, mm. someone who doesn't have direction. Mm. And sometimes we find ourselves there, or... Some other description of Terra is someone who is fearful, mm. who is not willing to take risk. Mm. And so he lingered, he loitered, and settled at some place mm. between Canaan and the, 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 the nativity, the lad of the, the native lad. Mm. And so he was not able to deliver his children mm. where they should have gone. Mm. And we see on the way Haran, who was supposed to be the father of of um, of Lot dying. Mm. By the time now we are seeing Abraham and Sarai mm. being told by God, and especially Abraham, being told to leave his country mm. and go to the place where God is going to show him, yes. we see that there is a boy here called Lot mm -hmm. who doesn't have parents. We don't even hear the mention of his mother. Mm. I don't know whatever happened to the wife of Haran yes. because it is not clear. Mm. And then we see them carrying a boy. And I'm thinking one of the reasons why they went with Lord Sarai would have allowed it so easily was because she didn't have a child. Mm. And maybe she could think, oh, maybe with Lord there is some hope and future. As I raise this child mm. that belongs to my brother-in-law, something is going to happen. Yes. Just like many of us find ourselves there, yes. you know, especially when we have no children of our own, mm. there is this bit of like, oh, let's take this child and mm. raise them. Mm. There are those elements of um, adoption. You, you go to the government and you say, I want to have a baby. Mm. that I can raise mm. and considering that you have no children of your own mm. you are able to have space to raise mm. and so I am thinking Sarai out of that pressure 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 mm. you know mm. like oh I don't have a child I'm raising mm. and everybody is saying oh that's maybe it was easy for them to be accompanied by a lot mm. and move on and we see they moved and they journeyed mm. and as they are journeying you remember in Genesis 12, 
there's a place the Bible talk, the Bible talks of hunger and famine, mm -hmm. and they had to go down to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And as we said the other time, as we were discussing Hagar, we say that the king of Egypt, it was known, it was a popular opinion in mm. their country mm. that any beautiful woman mm. should be the king's wife. Yes. And so at the entrance of uh, Egypt, and everybody came telling the king, oh, there's a man here, a Hebrew, who has come down for food, and he has a very beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. And so news got to the palace. And before it was too long, they came for the wife. And Abraham, or Abraham then, knew that he, he must have known the history of that place or the culture. Mm -hmm. And so we see him beseeching his wife mm -hmm. and telling her, please, when they ask you who you are, tell them you're my sister, mm. which was true because it was like um, those old days, families used to marry yes. among themselves. Yes. Why? To preserve their seed, mm. to preserve their their family. Mm. I mean, their, I don't know what time to use properly, mm. but to preserve, let me just say to preserve their seed. Mm. And so we see, uh, like, uh, like there was this brother, of his called Naho, mm. who married a cousin, yes. then you'll see that even Abraham, if he married Sarai, it was like she was of the same family. Yes. And even when she's saying, you're my sister, she's, uh, he's saying rather, you're my sister, he's correct, mm. because they are of the same blood. Mm. But now they have a covenant of a husband and wife. Mm. And you remember how she was herded in mm. to the king of Egypt. And uh, then, because God could not have allowed this young woman to have a seed that was not of the promise. Mm. It, it did not allow the king to have a seed mm -hmm. from mm. Sarai or with Sarai. Mm. Imagine have God having spoken to Abraham, then he allows that Sarah is taken by the king of mm -hmm. Egypt yes. and they have a son. Mm. What would have happened to the promise? That he had said mm. that he would bless Abraham mm. and his seed will multiply mm. and will be full like the sun or the stars. Mm. If he could count the stars, then he was able to count his population. Yes. Yes. That is what God was just telling him. Mm. So God comes in and protects Sarai. Mm -hmm. She is still Sarai even now. Mm. Her name has not changed, mm. which means contention. Mm. Like someone who brings strife, mm. you know, strife or contention. Yes. Everywhere she's going, before she broke through, we could see a lot of contention. Yes. Like we are hearing when they are moving, the Bible tells us that um, Terah moved with his, with his son Abram, mm -hmm. moved with his son Nahor, and also moved with his son, his son the son of his, of his late son. Mm. It's like, they are, and then they are talking about even Sarai, who was wife to Abraham, was part of the people that moved with the father-in-law. Yes. It's there is like a, I am looking at Sarai and Abraham mm. and seeing a gap of a kind. Yes, mm. this marriage is working, but there's something still not connecting very well. Yes. And you can see he was willing to allow the king have his wife. And what did he say? He said, "Let's." Let you go so that you can save my life. Mm. And I want to speak to a woman here who is in a situation or a marriage mm. that is not really adding value to mm. them mm. simply because they are either barren in a way or they are not able to add value in something. Mm. They are either housewives who have nothing they are presenting on the table. And sometimes they have but supposed or they find themselves being used in a, in a way that they feel misused. Because looking at what happened to Sarai, that the husband was willing to give her out to save his life, that is to mean, it's like, oh, my life, I man, yes, yes. I am, my I life is so more important. important. Mm. And uh, most of the times women find themselves in those shoes. Absolutely. It's like a daily 
daily experience struggle. a struggle mm. that women are always found in a place where they have to, to fight for to, their existence or to to be the ones i'm trying to think of someone is being attacked mm. someone comes with them um, to to hit you uh-huh. or to hurt you yes. or they want to shoot you mm. and then there in between a woman just comes in and stands to like a shield yeah 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 i was looking for the name the word shield mm. it's like women have found themselves in the shield place mm. many times and even if they are not the shield place any bad thing that happens is meted on them mm. you see how the bible is saying sarai was Baron mm. and then here she is if that is the first introduction yeah we get it's the introduction we get Sarai, of Sarai yes. as she was barren Sarai, the bad the barren barren, one. And yeah yeah and you can look at the several women in the bible mm. who were barren mm. and it's like as a common anthem mm. should be put on for them and so we find that she was misused as well mm. and i think having come from a culture that mishandled her and did not really care about how she felt with all these things mm. she comes to a point and thinks men i have been through too much i have been given out i've been called barren everybody knows i can't have children I have gone with my husband to places I've just had to follow. Mm. I cannot give my opinion. Yeah, you see Tara moved his family and wife is I mean Lot Abraham's wife is part of the people mm. who must follow the father in law. Mm. Then here we come and the Lord tells Abraham leave and I'm going to bless you. And at some point Abraham realizes it's too dry here. We don't have food. Mm-hmm. Let's go down. Let's backslide. Let's go down. Yeah. Remember the the time we did uh, Naomi no, and the yes. husband and mm-hmm. the family. Mm-hmm. So women and we say women find themselves most of the times mm-hmm. in a place where they cannot independently come out of yeah. something. Yes. They have to keep dancing to the tune yeah. even when they don't know what shoes to wear to dance True. or what ground to step on to to dance mm-hmm. they just have to follow the river mm-hmm. as it flows mm-hmm. and so we find sarai in the house of the king but thank god because he came in for her mm-hmm. and he fought her battles and that is to tell every woman who is listening to us yes. who is not able to fight their battles mm-hmm. in fact none of us can really stand okay. up and say i have fought my battles mm. no because it's god who helps us mm. so god comes in closes every system makes sure nothing is flowing in egypt hits them with plague mm. and the king cannot be able to continue enjoying mm. and it's at some point everything is not running mm. it's like it's all dead why because of a woman remember sarai has been given out by the husband mm. to make sure that he lives mm. and then the king had to call for abram mm. and ask why did you lie to me why are you causing us all yes, this yes. mess mm. and they had to be given a lot of property mm. and been told get out of our space look for some space to operate from mm. and like we said the other time the muslims believe that hagai hagar rather was given to this family of abram and sarai and token. as a token is mm. part of the token or maybe they they realized hey this man he has a god that is so special mm. let us connect to him through marriage or through giving them a girl mm. so that this blessing can also flow mm. you know there are those people yes. who have such beliefs yes. and so we see sarai walking faithfully and patiently mm. and following the husband wherever he went mm. and later on she it's like she got to a place where she was so beaten by the experiences of life this this experience alone whenever i think about it my mind diverges you know like dissects like gets into fragments mm. thinking of a man who would say please save my life to a woman <laughs> when we know traditionally it is it the, is the man, man that should save yes. the life of 
mm. a woman mm. and uh, the fear of that I would die mm. was a big deal mm. because maybe God would have allowed Abraham to live mm. because he had a future and a destiny and a covenant with him mm. but he they agreed with the wife I'm sure the wife maybe was 50-50 mm. saying oh you think you think you think and now that she could not be able to argue her case mm. she had to give up and allow that to happen yes. but we see later on when she comes back and they continue with life mm. and nothing is coming forth and she thinks that oh I, we can have a child through my servant mm. you remember we discussed slightly something called surrogacy mm. where you if you're not able to have a child you look and be able to to, to another woman to yeah to to bear a child mm. for you mm. and surrogacy these days is being practiced it has been there you can see it it's, mm. it began in, in those olden days it's mm. not there's nothing new on on earth so and we see what happens when she allows her maid mm. to be the wife let's say the wife of the husband mm. and her space is taken mm. and she cannot breathe sure. and she doesn't know what to do mm. until she is just there looking at the girl and mm. puts pressure and the girl goes away mm. and maybe when the girl goes away sarah is left thinking oh life now has to has just to begun be. But remember what the angel of the Lord does to Hagar, mm. tells her, go back to your mistress mm. and submit, submit to her. That is to mean God was still trying to help, not really help, mm. trying to. Mm. God was helping Sarai mm. to understand that her situation is not forever. True. And uh, there are so many of us who are in situations, especially like right now, economically speaking, things are tough. Mm. Yeah, there's mm. so much pressure mm. for the woman especially mm. and those who have families to try and um, try and meet and uh, make and meet mm. and and meet. I today English is running away. <laughs> and uh, you may find women doing very odd things to try and find solution, mm. put food on the table, mm. you know and meet every other need in life mm -hmm. and they may be pushed to that corner mm -hmm. to give up anything yes. but we want to say that our god is able mm -hmm. and he will come through for us even if he presses us down and he makes us fall like we would say sarah i was on the ground when every time she tried to get a solution or the husband used to again to get a solution mm -hmm. you remember they would go to some other place and they will, she will be given to, up to another king called Abimelech. Mm. And there God fights the battles mm. and even makes the women around there to be barren. They could not bear children. And that is to mean for a while she had been given out that until they were able to realize that they cannot have children. Mm. Bearing children is not a one day exercise. <laughs> it has to take like nine, <laughs> nine months, months plus. So it is like, I'm almost thinking she may have taken a whole year mm. in another month. Now this is a second episode with Abimelech. And then Abimelech calls and says, no, this can't be. How do you just do this to us? How do you mess us up like this? Mm. How, why couldn't you speak? the truth yes. because what the bible says and is true is you shall know the truth and the yes, truth shall set, shall set you free mm -hmm. we find ourselves in situations in life like sarai the mother of nations where nothing is forthcoming where we are at zero and we are clocking 90 years that is to mean we are getting old and people are starting to signal hey miriam you are 40. you are beyond the clock <laughs> <laughs> oh, all your schoolmates, mm. their children mm. are in high school, mm. you know, those kind of things. Mm. They will tell you so many things. And sometimes you'll find somebody, the pressures of the society mm. can make you go look for a solution mm. where God is not. Mm. And before you realize it, it becomes a thorn in your flesh. And until you pray and intercede for God to make a way. Because as we continue see looking at Sarah, we will see her name being changed to Sarah. Mm. We will see her now even when the, the maid has had a child 
And I'm sure all the interest of a master is on Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And it's like Masarai can continue. If you are saying in Kiswahili in Kenya, Pambadari with, with her Hali. With your Hali's. And, and, you know, struggle with your issue. Work on your issues. Mm -hmm. Aluta continua. Mm -hmm. And so, but somehow we see still God comes in and changes her name from Sarai to Sarah mm -hmm. and then promises that she's going to be the mother of nations. Mm -hmm. She's going to be a queen. From having struggled with all these things, being given out to kings, anyhow, mm -hmm. God preserved her because how could, she was not given out to a servant. Mm -hmm. Even when the man decided, <laughs> I'm going to save my life yes. through my wife, yes. he was, she was always in the palace. Yes. It's like the Lord wanted to tell her, though you be desperate, yet will you sit with kings. He's raising you from the, from the ashes and also from the dust of the life and putting you up to eat with kings mm. and helping you to come out with a song one day. Amen. Yes. Amen. That was powerful <laughs> intro, laying of the foundation mm -hmm. uh, about Sarah. And um, there are so many lessons that we can, we can draw from Sarah mm -hmm. or from the, the life that we already have seen. Uh, you know, that lineage and, you know, the way she, she even her introduction, you know, you are introduced by your pain. Mm -hmm. Like that was her, her identity, her pain of yeah. not having yeah. children. Mm -hmm. that, that was the identity that he, he is even introduced in the, in the Bible, in the Bible, like mm -hmm. uh, Sa the wife of Abraham, Sarah, who was, was barren. By. So, uh, so uh, I, I just want to talk to, to, to a woman out there uh, as we close this, that it doesn't matter what introduces you. It doesn't matter what has overtaken your identity. Is it the circumstances of life? Is it the pain? Is it the shame that is upon your life? Is it the pain that introduces you to the world? It doesn't matter how bad or how dark it may seem because God is always behind the curtains working. That is such a powerful foundation that we have laid, Mama, you have laid for us for about Sarah. And um, it's interesting how Sarah is introduced. Mm -hmm. Sarah is introduced through her pain. Sarah is introduced through her shame. And most women right now, you may find yourself in such a, such a situ situation. Okay? And you find yourself being, the, the, the thing that introduces you is your shame. Mm -hmm. The thing that introduces you is your pain. The thing that introduces you is your pain. And you really don't know how to get detached out of that. Uh, shame out of that darkness that out of that dark cloud out of that pain but I want you to know this just as we see as we continue to journey and explore Sarah because what God has spoken over your life it shall surely come to pass it doesn't matter how long it takes it doesn't matter if right now you seem not to see whether you are doubting if God really said but if he said it, he is not a man that he should lie, and therefore he shall bring it to accomplishment. And therefore he shall change your shame into glory. He shall turn around your captivity into freedom. He shall turn around your pain. He shall take out your pain and give you joy. And therefore hold on, follow through. Just like Sarah followed, when God spoke to Abraham and told Abraham moved him, she moved. When uh, Abraham sacrificed her to the king and said, please mm -hmm. become my sister for now, for my own life, please. <laughs> she did not ask a lot of questions. She was like the sacrificial lamb. She laid her life down. She became, she became the, 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 what can I, what can I say? Like she, she yielded, she yielded to the will of God through the husband that God spoke to, to Abraham and he said, move 
God spoke to Abraham and even we see which we will see later on when when they they beget their son Isaac and uh, God asks of Abraham to sacrifice his only son and Abraham moves with the son and you know every mother has a very strong intuition and she can tell there is something which is not right which is about to go down but what does she do she does not fight the husband she yields and she she she's a humble and yet god uh, provided the sacrificial lamb therefore in that situation in that that space that you're feeling yourself that you have found yourself in that pain that oh your name shall be changed that God is going to turn around that situation. We just want to speak of hope and peace in your hearts. And therefore, may the peace of God strengthen you. May the peace of God uphold you. May the peace of God direct you in every situation of this life. You are loved child of God, and God is working out things for you in the secret and is going to cover you with his glory. You are so much love. Thank you for being a great companion. Until next time, God bless you.